Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Markajani here. Today's video is gonna be on candida and brain fog. We'll be talking about why brain fog occurs, what's the underlying mechanism, what it means, and what we can do about it. Before we dive in, please smash that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Put your comments below. Let me know what your experience with candida and or brain fog has been and what's worked and what helped. All right, cool. So first off, candida and brain fog. One of the major mechanisms of brain fog is gonna be integrity issues with the blood-brain barrier. So we have kind of this barrier system. If here's our, if here's our brain right here, for compounds to get into the brain, there's this, these natural cells that line that barrier called astrocytes. And this is our blood brain barrier. And this is kind of the filter to keep toxins from the outside in. And we have similar issues in our gut. We have tight junctions in our gut. And this is like the epithelial cells in our gut. Very similar. And so imagine these little barriers open up and foods and, and particles can slip in there and now they're in our, in our bloodstream, all right? So this is important. So once we have barrier integrity issues, the outside world can actually get in. So it's kind of weird, but food inside of your intestines is actually still outside of your body, right? Once it goes from the intestines into the bloodstream, now it's technically inside. Same thing here, brain. Once it goes through these astrocytes, now it's going into the brain like so, and now we see an increase in activation of what's called microglial cells. Microglial cells are the immune cells of our brain. They're trying to clean things up. And when our microglial cells are activated, we're gonna see maybe inflammation. Think about it, it's like an all out war. Is it possible for bullets to go by and bombs to go off and for you to walk away unscathed? Probably not, right? There's probably gonna be some collateral damage as they call it. So the more we have barrier integrity with the brain or barrier integrity with the gut, leaky gut, Issues here with barrier integrity from the gut actually will eventually make its way to the brain. So the gut's kind of the entryway for everything that goes on with the brain. So it starts with the gut first, because that's how most of the things come in through your body, unless you're breathing it in or it's injected. For the most part, it's all going through your gut at some level. So blood-brain barrier, integrity, and then we talk about the leaky gut and the leaky brain. So when we have barrier integrity here with the gut, that's gonna lead to barrier integrity with the brain. Now, how do we deal with it? So things like candida, for instance, are gonna produce various mycotoxins that are gonna stress out the gut, right? Mycotoxins are not good. They also can produce acid aldehyde. So we have things like mycotoxins, and you can get mycotoxins also from water damage right? We, we kind of have like this big umbrella, like fungus or mold, and yeast is a sub-umbrella, but the water damage also can produce mold, which is kind of like in that fungal umbrella, and those molds can produce like okra toxin and various mycotoxins, hundreds of different kinds. And then we have things like acid aldehyde, which your body makes from alcohol too. Alcohol does that, and then we have another thing called sal solanol, so salmonol, I think it's spelt like that. So these are all different stressors on the brain. This can actually affect the midbrain. This can affect dopamine production. Not good, right? Not good. Dopamine's the I feel you feel good, the focus, the reward center kind of neurotransmitter. So all these are potential stressors that can make its way up to the brain. And of course, if we have bacterial issues, guess what? That's where we're gonna see LPS or endotoxin for short. So these are all different kinds of toxins that could, get, could make their way to the gut. Now, how do we deal with it? Typically, there's three major approaches that I incorporate in every functional medicine program I create for my patients. So first one is we are going to starve it out. So a lot of times, acellular carbohydrates, refined foods, inflammatory foods, gluten, dairy, grains, etc., can drive fungal overgrowth. So we starve it out by decreasing the fuel source. Number two, we kill it out. We use specific herbs to help knock it down makes a huge difference. We set the tone though and get the hormones and the natural inflammatory handling systems and the immune system dialed in first, and then we crowd it out on the backside, right? Using specific beneficial yeast like Saccharomyces boulardii, high dose probiotics. 
A lot of times there could be other infections present, H. pylori, other kinds of parasites. There could be a lot of immune stress or hormonal stress that we have to get in order before we go to that next phase. So sometimes there are just things that have to be lined up just right so we can have the greatest chance of success. But here's how candida can make its way to your brain or can create stress in the gut and these stressors and these byproducts can make their way potentially into the brain and create stress and inflammation and create mood issues. Brain fog, one study showed, for instance, in men, there was a significant increase in schizophrenia when they had candida. And they compared it to a control group too, so it did kind of have a nice little cause and effect um, connection there as well, which is really nice. So a lot of mood, mental health issues and cognitive things, especially brain fog, when you have these kind of gut stressors. And again, if you guys want to reach out and deep dive in or deal with these issues directly with myself and my colleagues, click down below. And if you enjoyed the content, give me that thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Give me a share as well. And put your comments down below. Let me know what you all think. All right, you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.